The problem asks for all pairs of positive integers, a and b, where the expression a times b squared plus b plus 7 divides a squared times b plus a plus b. This is the divisibility condition we need to solve. The complexity of these polynomials makes a direct approach difficult. Therefore, our first goal is to find an algebraic simplification. The primary strategy for this type of problem is to construct a linear combination. The property states that if an integer divides another, it must also divide any integer linear combination of the two. To apply this strategy cleanly, we will define our terms. Let d be the divisor and n be the dividend. The problem is now concisely stated as d divides n. Our goal is to choose a combination that simplifies the expressions. Observing the leading terms, we can eliminate the highest powers by constructing the specific combination b times n minus a times d. This choice of multipliers b and negative a is designed to make the a squared b squared terms cancel out upon subtraction. Substituting the full expressions for n and d back into our combination, we see that d must divide this new, more complex-looking expression. However, this will simplify dramatically. Let's perform the distribution. The first term, b times n, expands to a squared, b squared, plus a and b plus e b squared. The second term, a times d, expands to a squared, b squared, plus a b plus 7a. Now, we distribute the negative sign. This sets up the cancellation. The a squared, b squared terms cancel, and the a, b terms cancel. The only remaining terms are b squared minus 7a. Therefore, our original condition implies that d must divide b squared minus 7a. This is a crucial, logical step. The new condition is necessary, but not guaranteed to be sufficient. Any solution pair, a, b, must satisfy this simpler divisibility, so we can use it to find all candidate solutions. Each candidate must then be tested against the original condition. This simplification is the core of the solution. We have replaced a complex polynomial divisibility with a much simpler one, which we can now analyze through case analysis. We now analyze the necessary condition that d divides b squared minus 7a. The expression b squared minus 7a can be zero, positive, or negative. We will proceed with a case analysis based on the sign of this expression. Case 1, b squared minus 7a equals 0. In this case, the condition becomes that d divides 0. Since a and b are positive integers, the divisor d, which is a b squared plus b plus 7, is strictly positive. Any non-zero integer divides 0, so this condition is always met, provided b squared equals 7a. The equation b squared equals 7. A implies that b squared must be a multiple of 7. Since 7 is a prime number, if 7 divides b squared, it must also divide b. This is a fundamental property of prime divisors. Consequently, we can express b as 7 times k for some positive integer k. Substituting b equals 7k into the equation gives the quantity 7k all squared equals 7a. This simplifies to 49k squared equals 7a. Dividing by 7 yields a equals 7k squared. This gives us an infinite family of solutions. The pairs, a, b, are of the form 7k squared comma 7k for any positive integer k. For example, if k equals 1, we get the pair 7 comma 7. If k equals 2, we get 28 comma 14. We must verify that this family of solutions satisfies the original equation. Substituting a equals 7k squared and b equals 7k into n, we get 7k times the quantity 49k to the fourth plus k plus 1. Substituting into d, we get 7 times the same quantity. Thus, an equals k times d, which confirms that d divides n for all positive integers k. This family of solutions is valid. Case 2, b squared minus 7a is greater than 0. 
A fundamental property of divisibility is that if a positive integer d divides a positive integer m, then d must be less than or equal to m. In our case, d divides the positive integer b squared minus 7a. This implies that a b squared plus a b plus 7 must be less than or equal to b squared minus 7a. Rearranging the terms of the inequality brings all terms to one side. Factoring out b squared gives b squared times the quantity a minus 1 plus b plus 7a plus 7 is less than or equal to 0. We analyze the left-hand side of this inequality. If a equals 1, the expression simplifies to b plus 14. Since b is a positive integer, this is at least 15. If a is greater than or equal to 2, then a minus 1 is positive. Since b is also positive, every term in the expression is positive. In all possible cases, the left-hand side is strictly positive, which contradicts the condition that it must be less than or equal to 0. This contradiction implies that our initial assumption for this case was false. Therefore, no solutions exist when b squared is greater than 7a. Alternatively, the difference between d and b squared minus 7a is b squared times a minus 1 plus b plus 7, a plus 7, which is strictly positive. This means d is always greater than b squared minus 7a, so divisibility is impossible. Case 3. b squared minus 7a is less than 0. This case may yield a finite number of solutions. Our necessary condition is that d divides b squared minus 7a. Since d is positive and b squared minus 7a is negative, d must divide the absolute value, which is 7a minus b squared. Both the divisor and the new dividend are positive. Applying the magnitude principle again gives the inequality a b squared plus b plus 7 is less than or equal to 7a minus b squared. Rearranging and factoring this inequality gives a times the quantity b squared minus 7 plus b squared plus b plus 7 is less than or equal to 0. This form is useful for analyzing small integer values of b. First, we test the subcase where b equals 1. We begin with the key inequality derived for case 3. Our task is to substitute b equals 1 into this expression. Performing the substitution, the left side becomes a plus 8, and the right side becomes 7a minus 1. Rearranging gives 9 is less than or equal to 6a. This implies a must be greater than or equal to 1.5. As a must be an integer, a must be at least 2. This inequality only provides a bound. To find the actual solutions, we must check the original divisibility condition for b equals 1. The condition is that a plus 8 must divide a squared plus a plus 1. We can analyze this using modular arithmetic. Modulo a plus 8, a is congruent to negative 8. Therefore, a squared plus a plus 1 is congruent to negative 8 squared plus negative 8 plus 1, which evaluates to 57. This means that a plus 8 divides a squared plus a plus 1 if and only if a plus 8 divides 57. The integer divisors of 57 are 1, 3, 19, and 57. Thus, a plus 8 must be one of these values. From our earlier inequality, we know a is at least 2, which implies a plus 8 is at least 10. This eliminates 1 and 3, leaving 19 and 57 as the only possibilities for a plus 8. If a plus 8 equals 19, then a equals 11. This gives the candidate pair 11, 1. We verify the divisor is 19 and the dividend is 133. Since 19 times 7 is 133, the pair is a valid solution. If a plus 8 equals 57, then a equals 49. This gives the candidate pair 49, 1. We verify the divisor is 57 and the dividend is 2,451. Since 57 times 43 is 2,451, this pair is also a valid solution.
Now, we test the subcase where b equals 2. For b equals 2, the inequality becomes 4. a plus 2 plus 7 is less than or equal to 7a minus 4. This simplifies to 4a plus 9 is less than or equal to 7a minus 4. Rearranging gives 13 is less than or equal to 3a. This implies a must be greater than 4 and 1 third, so a must be at least 5. We now check the derived divisibility condition for b equals 2. 4a plus 9 must divide 7a minus 4. Using this simpler condition is more efficient than returning to the original quadratic expression in a. We apply the linear combination technique again to eliminate a. 4. a plus 9 must divide 7 times the quantity 4. a plus 9 minus 4 times the quantity 7a minus 4. This expands to 28a plus 63 minus the quantity 28a minus 16. The a terms cancel, and the expression simplifies to 79. So, 4a plus 9 must divide 79. The number 79 is prime, so its only positive divisors are 1 and 79. Since a is at least 5, 4a plus 9 must be at least 29. Therefore, 4a plus 9 must be equal to 79. Solving for a gives 4a equals 70, so a equals 35 divided by 2. This is not an integer. Consequently, there are no integer solutions when b equals 2. Finally, we consider the subcase where b is greater than or equal to 3. We return to the factored inequality from the beginning of case 3, a times the quantity b squared minus 7 plus b squared plus b plus 7 must be less than or equal to 0. If b is greater than or equal to 3, then b squared is at least 9, so b squared minus 7 is at least 2. Since a is a positive integer, the term a times this quantity is positive. The second term, b squared plus b plus 7, is also clearly positive. The sum of these two positive terms must be strictly positive. This contradicts the inequality which requires the sum to be less than or equal to zero. Therefore, there are no solutions for b greater than or equal to 3 within case 3. This conclusion is restricted to the condition of case 3 and does not affect the infinite family of solutions from case 1. A point of rigor. Our analysis relied on the divisor being positive. The expression a ab squared plus b plus 7 is indeed always positive for positive integers a and b. Therefore, when it divides a negative number, it must be less than or equal to that number's absolute value, validating our use of inequalities. We can now summarize the complete set of solutions found through our case analysis. Our exhaustive analysis, which proceeded from a necessary condition and included verification for sufficiency, has yielded all possible solutions. The analysis for case 3 showed no solutions for b greater than or equal to 2, but this does not conflict with the infinite family from case 1, which exists under a different initial assumption. The complete solution set consists of two isolated pairs and one infinite family. The first solution is the pair 11, 1. The second solution is the pair 49, 1. The third is the infinite family of pairs of the form 7k squared comma 7k for any positive integer k. This problem demonstrates several powerful techniques in number theory. First, using linear combinations to simplify divisibility conditions. Second, a systematic case analysis based on the sign of a derived expression. Third, the application of magnitude inequalities to bound variables. Fourth, making strategic choices, such as working with a simpler derived condition. Fifth, performing explicit verification to confirm that candidate solutions are sufficient. And sixth, maintaining a clear distinction between necessary and sufficient conditions throughout the argument. The solution to this problem is a model of rigorous mathematical argument. By transforming the initial condition into a simpler, necessary one, we constrained the search space. An exhaustive case analysis, followed by direct verification, 
allowed us to identify all solutions while proving that no others exist. This systematic approach showcases how complex polynomial conditions can be resolved through algebraic manipulation and logical deduction. If you found this explanation helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more content. Thank you for watching.